My name is Rhapsody and welcome back to Monster Train Hersel's Workshop. Hey, uh, the Awoken's had a little bit of an update. Specifically, the Awoken Sentinel. Let's pull it up here. Uh, the Cultivating Sentient has had their card draw moved from a Revenge Trigger to a Cards Drawn modifier that scales with the champion's level. Uh, they've also gained Cultivate as a Revenge Trigger that also increases the stats... Oh, sorry, uh, Cultivate as a mechanic, increases the stats of the lowest health friendly unit and the cultivate the, the cultivating sentient has scales with champion level. The health uh, that scales at champions level 2 and 3 has been reduced and yeah, now that levels 2 and 3 have ability increases so not just health increases tied into its value. The Awoken Hollow has also had their Rejuvenate trigger changed from targeting their self with the plus one plus one to triggering Cultivate on the lowest health minion on the floor. And the Merchant of Steel upgrade has been changed from Spikes 4 to 10 health and Spikes 3. Those are all the specific updates for the Cultivating Sentient here. I don't think I'm going to do a patch video actually over, uh, over this change. Don't necessarily think it's large enough for it. Um, I might roll in a patch discussion about that to the next patch that happens to be delivered to Monster Train. Who knows when that'll be. But, here we have the Awoken and a random clan following, obviously non-exile, so that I can utilize the Sentient. I will say, if I don't find the Cultivating Sentient as one of my options at the very start, I reserve the right to re-roll the start of the run. Because I'm really trying to get a look at that new mechanic right there. Hey, this is a really good setup already. Invigorating Solution, two copies of Restoration Detonation, two copies of Prismal Dust in the base deck. Also got Seraph the Patient as our end. Hammer Chest Plates. Friendly units get plus three on their base HP. So that keeps the Shade Splitters, the Morsels, alive through the possibility of a sweep against them. Sure. Let's take that. Hey, there we are. So Revenge Cultivate 1 increases the health and attack of the friendly unit with the lowest health by the Cultivate value. So a low health unit on the same floor as this Cultivating Sentient is going to be getting 1-1 one, one every single time the Sentient is hit. You also just draw plus one each turn and... I don't know. I don't know if that's valuable to me at all or if there's any kind of uh, a prevailing narrative that that's something that I'd be interested in, but uh, but I guess I might be a little excited about that, just a little. I'm probably not really going to want to put many Shade Splitters on the Sentience floor because it's going to buff them and then they get eaten immediately after that. So what benefit are we ultimately really getting? Should I go for a Prismal Dust? No, because the Revenge Trio won't be activated. So I actually do need to leave it like that. Yikes, there's the Collector. Not really where I wanted you. Pretty much hoping you would appear on the next floor up. Well... We're kind of just not really gonna damage the enemies at all? We'll do fine against the boss. That's the one saving grace we really have going on there. Okay. That's decent damage right there as well. I'll use Shade Splitter for the top floor. Looking for a restoration detonation in this hand too. Didn't find one, but we're really good in the relentless phase when we have a bunch of cultivate triggers there. Vine grass, razor sharp edge. Razor sharp edge is actually really good for lowering the health of the minion, giving them the ability to start getting targeted by this again. The cultivate value should something else actually or rather, should the Cultivate increase its health to the point that it is no longer the Cultivating target? Vine Grasp is also just good. I am going to take Razor Sharp Edge, though. I'm a little scared. Uh, I'm probably not really going to go heavily into Morsels in this run. Umbra, yeah, Awoken's on the Merchant of Steel side. 
So I'm probably not going to take any of these because I really want to utilize like a cultivating trigger floor. Cool. Literally, like the Animus of Will is exactly what I want from this Awoken banner, but I, I dare not even ask for it. Thankfully, the game provides regardless. Right. Oh my god, there's also an Awoken Hollow with a Rejuvenate Cultivate trigger. Hmm. It's going to be really hard to get them on the same floor as the others. I may actually be better off just upgrading the Animus of Will, putting it behind the Sentient, and then duping the Animus of Will as well. They're also really going to be good with the razor sharp edges. So effectively, like, the cultivate value is always buffing an Animus of Will on that floor. Like, we have six pips, we take a capacity gem, we probably take a... Probably take a... A, 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 a draw gem by upgrading our sentience, so we'll go for an energy gem instead. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna skip on that hollow there. If I didn't just find the Animus of Will, I would have taken it, though. So Hellvent literally in the next area. I could... I could actually just do this. This is not bad. I'd have to find more ways to scale the damage of the the Animus of Will. But really, what else would I put on it, right? Large Stone? No, they're not going to both fit on the same floor at that point. I mean, I would have put Large Stone on if I had it right now. Uh, What else would I put on it? Give it Quick? No, I want it to actually allow the Sentient in front of it to get hit so that we get the Cultivate Triggers. Damage, again, is probably, like, the biggest thing that I would do. I actually really like this. Actually, wait. I re-roll, because plus 5, plus 10 is way better, though. Well, now we just get plus 10. Okay. I mean, they are going to have their health increased by the Cultivate value. Yeah, but I'm not going to be able to take a Spikes challenge right now. Dang. Um. So I set up in this way because now I have the ability to collect either collector. Or at least I thought I did. Mm, that's no longer going to do that. Too many hits wasted on the front targets, I guess, there. Also, don't really want to play too much. Razor Sharp Edge is basically one of the only cards that I really want to be playing at this point. We'll heal. I mean, we're already fine. Like, already much more than fine. Those Shade Splitters are really easy cuts from this deck right now. I don't even know what we're going to be looking for from Umbra to actually... Wow, that's a second Razor Sharp Edge in the deck. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I don't know what we're looking for from Umbra. Gosh, I don't even really know what cards we're looking for at this point. How do we make the deck better? Let's also just quickly look at the Concealed Caverns first, just in case this gives us the ability to put something extra in. It does not. I could take a Bone Shine. It's not bad. Heal up the Pyre a little bit. I mean, what else am I really doing with my energy? Like, literally all I want is these two Razor Sharp Edges, this Invigorating Solution, these two Restoration Detonations for the sake of healing up the Sentient after they take damage, and then I want all of the rest of the deck to not exist. All right, I'm going to take the Bone Shine here this time, though. We dupe Ulanimus. Hmm. There is one thing we need to worry about. We don't even trigger the incant of the, the Seraph the Patient that often. And the health of the Sentient scales really... 
No, we don't really need to worry about that. I... Oh god, this is actually potent. Explosive Sigil is one extra damage to the front unit on death. Uh, That's pretty good for us, as you might imagine. I'm still going to set up on the top floor here. And then I'll sack a unit on the bottom line as well. Because I, I want all of these to get to the top floor, desperately, in fact. Um, yeah, I'll take the opportunity to bone shine for as much as possible there. Yeah, so this is a 34-3 right now. We're about to see exactly how large it's going to get in response. Yep, they've got plus six, plus six from that round. Pretty good. Uh, I mean, that takes away a, a damage trigger if I do that. So I'm just going to do two normal heals instead. Again, that would deal damage that I don't want to be dealing here. Maybe I should have thrown away the Animus of Will on the bottom line. Okay. We're now within the realm that I have to start healing up the Sentient, just to protect against a couple of waves of Daedalus. Not that many, though. Yeah, when I say not that many, I mean it. One... Two, three. So anything above 18 health would have been enough. Yeah, I was thinking about this the entire time. Is Furnace Tap still welcome in this deck? Like, another multi strike is. Is it good? Or do I just want to increase the damage of that unit? Like, I'm going to have six strikes going off on that floor. So, effectively, what I'm saying at this point is if we think about it in terms of a multiplicative increase of what we do in terms of damage, it increases the amount of damage that we do by uh, by another 33%. Right. If we're dealing 100% now, we're dealing 133.3 repeat up percent afterwards. But literally just having the ability to play Razor Sharp Edge is a increase of... 10 by the amount of multi-strike, so, so 30. Uh, which, to the enemy right now, as it is sitting by base, is more impactful than a Furnace Tap. Right? Getting 30 extra damage versus getting 23 extra damage. So, after a few Cultivate Triggers, obviously that Mathematics will skew the other way. I guess the revenge is going to get larger. We're going to be cultivating two and then cultivating three. So what? It's going to take like one hit until we reach that point. I just don't think I want to pay the Ember Drain for that Furnace Tap. Because if I do that, suddenly I'm introducing... I have to cost reduce the Razor Sharp Edges, both of them. Otherwise, I'm actually making a negative loss. Negative loss. As opposed to a positive gain. Um, yeah, then I'm making a loss on them. Also have to do that to the two Restoration Detonations. Heavily hampers my ability to play x cost cards, which may be important in the Seraph the Patient fight. I'm going to pass it. Oh. That's a Shadow Siege. I have any way to play that. Not only do I have not uh, no way to play it, creating a deck that has the ability to play that will kill this. It's also going to just be extremely difficult to get to the ability to utilize. No. Vine Mothers is, is definitely a consideration here. The big problem with Vine Mother is just like, if I don't want to really invest too much, that's like a bunch of upgrades or some such into it. And it gives us a sting or two for the sake of being a priority draw up against our two Animuses. I'm going to play this really safe and lean into our whole Cultivate build. Take the Light of the Seraph here. Stick with what we know. Well, not with what we know, but like 
this is a what we know way of capitalizing on a new thing you know also it just does seem like the other two would have been so high in cost to actually try and get any appreciable impact out of at the moment i might find things in the future that would make them more likely but i also might not hey like forever flame that would have made the shadow siege certainly a little bit more playable um, I think I still will take that, despite the fact that we have the only two Adams' will. Like, the shiny suits are probably going to end up getting cut. I think the big reason behind that is because the Sentient is going to increasingly draw more cards. More and more cards every single turn. Mm. But the Sentient is always played on turn one with the Adams of will, so what? Like, I'm saying that on turn two I get to save an energy on an Animus? No, 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 it's Priori's Cloak. I almost convinced myself in the incorrect direction there. Almost enemy units for all the health moving the floor. That's totally fine because I do no damage on other floors right now. I'd accept some spell support, but haven't really been finding much. That'll do it. Let's get a shiny steward down there as well. Uh, Prismal Dust too. I'd relish the opportunity to pick up some self-damaging spells in some variety. I'll take the extra energy next turn. Nice. Especially with the extra two draw, we managed to find a way to utilize it. Hmm. Pass again. So I return to the original question. How do I make this deck more powerful at this point? Or does every modification to this deck make it less powerful? You know what we're not good against? We're not good against Sweep right now. I mean, if I spread out the the uh, HP lowering effects, then I would have been a lot better against it. But we're still not hugely good against them. Thorn casing. Sting spells get plus 10 magic power and piercing. The fact that they weren't impactful enough was not the problem with the Vine Mother, but I would be really, really keen on seeing the Thorn Fruit now. Still don't want that Wildwood Tome. We are looking for as many different Cultivate Triggers as we can get, especially as they get increasingly powerful here. That Pyagro seems very good. We get plus three eventually draw per turn from the Sentient. We've got an Invigorating Solution. We don't have Root Seeds, but I don't think we need it for this. Good Pyagro. Hmm. There's a world in which that Prism Retrieval is an excellent way of scaling one of the Animuses of Will. Especially because they have three strikes. I I always I always have difficulty with this, right? You've got a unit that attacks once. It doesn't have any multi-strike. A unit that attacks twice has multi-strike. Both of those track me perfectly. A unit that attacks three times has multi-strike two. What? No, but it strikes three times. <laughs> Why is it not multi-strike three? I do get why it isn't. It makes total sense that it isn't. It's just as soon as you introduce the number, suddenly I want that number to parallel with exactly how many times the unit attacks. Uh, so it, it it does mean I've almost certainly referred to the Animus of Will multiple times, possibly even over the course of this episode, as having multi-strike three. But it has multi-strike uh, two, it strikes three times. So anytime I invest an X into a Prism Retrieval that happens to get one of them back, I get a return of 15 damage. That's pretty dang good. 
I still don't think I can take it here, right? It's a much slower start, and I don't generate that much energy. I mean, as soon I'm going to be generating five, right? One every turn from our Pyro, but then we have to get the Pyro before the Prism Retrieval. And then it has, like, literally not even in the same hand. It has to be before it, a turn before it. He absolutely... Okay, no, no, no. It's, it's, it's too finicky. I would have to have Permafrost on this to actually be able to utilize it effectively. And I don't have an easy way of guaranteeing that. Uh, I mean, look. I love the idea of a Concealed Cavern giving us a mini Animus of Will and then duping that as much as the next person. Assuming the next person absolutely loves that idea. But that's like one outcome that gives us a good thing over there. Whereas like holdover, plus 10, consume removal. Uh, the removal node themselves. There's so much value over here that is guaranteed. Whereas it's all contingent upon one event to be valuable over there. Dubly stat. So I could have done this if it wasn't for the fact that I know that I'm not going to be encanting that much on the on the active floor in the Seraphite. So I don't think I really need to worry about that that much. That is to say, like, giving Divine Shield to my frontline in order to try and protect them through it. Let's decrease the cost of the Razor Sharp Edges. So Consume Removal is interesting on both Pyagro and Invigorating Solution. Less for Invigorating Solution, because after I get this upgrade, we're going to be drawing eight cards a turn. So the Invigorating Solution, a lot of the time, says draw plus two cards next turn. Um, and because it was a card in your previous hand, it is one card positive. So it's not really great at that point. The thing about the Pyagro with the upgrade here is that we very seldom have anything to actually invest it into, because we want to play two Razor Sharp Edges and two Restoration Detonations, and then we want to leave. So actually, the answer here is we decrease the cost of the Restoration Detonation. Sorry, the Restoration Detonation. Razor Sharp Edge. Um, and then I think we just start removing units. <laughs> Having all of the shiny suits out of the deck is going to make it really, really easy to draw Channel Song. Should we find that after the next boss fight. Our next marked up ones are the Shade Splitters. This is the next marked for removal. Novus enemies enter with spikes four. Well, you did it to me. You found that, uh, you found that exact weakness in my build. To be fair, it's not really that well hidden. Ah, I can't even raise a sharp edge to kill it. Dang. Bye. Um. Here we go. You know you got a pretty good setup when on first blush it has the ability to kill pretty much all of these enemies. Yeah, I'm actually gonna... Get rid of those Prismal Dusts there. The Prismal Dusts are actually pretty bad in this deck as well. I'm also going to keep my units on a kind of HP parity. There's the Sower of Sorrow. I'm now going to start buffing the Sentient in the front line because I did forget that the Sower of Sorrow was AoE. The one giant weakness I identified in my own build earlier. This is gonna be interesting. Did I just completely screw myself? The answer is no. For that reason. <laughs> Shut up about it. <laughs> it's okay. 
Uh, focus growth actually takes us to the draw of 10 each turn. It's also worth noting, it's actually a really good target for split anvil casting too, should we happen to find that. Prism Retrieval's really giving us a second chance to take it. I'm going to say a second no thank you. Uh, okay. Machance of Magic. Thank you for giving us pretty much exactly the upgrade I was going to ask for. So, uh, well, we'll have a look outside first. Oh, look, it's a split handful I was asking for. Thanks. Good thing I didn't decrease the cost of that card, eh? Although, I probably should have given Holdover to Focus Growth if I knew that I was going to get that there. I'm going to take the Awoken Consumable card looking for Preserved Thorns. We didn't find it. And two Restoration Detonations with plus 10 on. I really don't need the... really don't need the regen as my core plan for healing our units. Oh, yes. Extra two next turn. We're up. Draw negative two next turn. <laughs> I'm going to Prismal Dust to Backliner now. Giving myself the ability to play some more Restores at least. That's why I plan on playing no minions on this floor, interestingly. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Oh. Arcus is taking a couple of lumps here. We're going to get an incan on the top floor. In around a turn's time. I say around because it is exactly around that area, but not precisely. There we go. Come on back up here. So I have to miss out on one of the holdover casts. Oh, uh, I missed out on two razor sharp edges. That's rough. I denied myself a lot of damage there in order to save energy that I didn't need. Hmm. Okay. Let's not do that again in the future. Not my cleverest idea ever. See, by the point now, right, those furnace taps are an additional 100 damage. But, like, am I holding on to them to play in the Relentless phase? Now that we've got the Split Amble as well as zero costs on both of the Razor Sharp Edges, it, it seems a lot more takeable. So I could probably take one after this, if one was off. Although that might look scary, I think we're totally fine. Literally just after we get the next upgrade to this unit. I think we have enough strikes on that top floor that trample isn't actually necessary. Awoken Rail Spike's a little interesting though. Right. There's a bunch of cards, make some default zero cost. If nothing else, it draws a bunch of cards. Sure, you're never really disappointed by having that. I'll take the energy. The deck runs on such low cost. Save the X cost cards, at least. Not a huge fan of those. I really hope that I find money in this concealed cabin to justify being here. Yikes. That's not great. 
Giving a Hearthstone to one of the units now? Like, yeah, sure, it shores me up against some Sweep, shores me up against some Thorns. Uh, but it just guarantees the other unit is the one that constantly gets buffed. I guess that makes one unit that gets buffed with the Razor Sharp Edges and the other one that gets buffed with the Cultivate. That actually might be great. Yeah. All right. Never, never mind. I'm on board now. I was on foot. He was on foot. Um. Yeah, I'm going to save the money here rather than reroll. We're in the seventh. So we've got a merchant of trinkets in the next area anyway. Oh, look, they do have spikes. So we have to be able to accept 15 damage on each of them every turn. We'll have the ability to heal it back up. That I'm not worried about. I really want the money and I think I can now take this. Get self mutilation out of hand. Do I go giant awoken rail spike or giant prismal dust? What's the awoken rail spike fishing for? Raise a sharp edge, I guess. I mean, look, this always goes out first. Plus six on that side. Heals that ultimately do nothing there. Okay. Frontline gets a solid attack through. We manage to keep everyone off of their respective death's doors. We're not catching all the units at the moment, but thankfully they're not going up with too much HP. As it stands, the largest problem is just guaranteeing the Animus of Will in the backline doesn't die after getting all of these self-mutilations that I have no ability to prevent right now. I may just be trading away a bunch of HP at this point for a bunch of goals. I kind of think I'm in a position where that's not abjectly awful. There's value in that. Backline unit is now unsavable. Right? Goes to attack, you go up to uh, 12 current HP. You are unleashing all three of your attacks, which means you are definitely dying. I was wrong. I don't know how I miscalculated that, but I was like, eh, I'm gonna give it a chance, I guess. It would be hilarious if exactly now I lost all of them. Okay, we got our restoration detonation. Okay, never mind, we're fine. <laughs> Now, did we need to take that risk? No. Not at all. Am I glad that I did? No, are you kidding me? But did I do it? Yes to that one. <laughs> oh. 
Don't do what Donnie don't did. You're all out there looking for, for tips and tricks on this game. Not that. That was too much HP to give away. Honestly, if the purifiers went in that fight, that would have been totally fine, though. Uh... I'm going to take the copy of Awake just in case I'm low and, and could still use it. And fine, I'll take Furnace Tap. We're looking for the possibility of giving it Permafrost, I imagine, here. Hold over on focus growth. Yep. Gives us the ability to play everything every turn. Then. Hmm. Let's have a look at the other shop first. It's one per stack of spikes. We have none of those. Spell cards with consumer. So a chance to be discarded instead. Uh, I guess we have a couple of those. Everything enters with lifesteal 2. That doesn't really matter. I'm going to reroll. Enemies get negative 1. There's no enemy in this that only has 1 damage. That is just useful. I'm also going to... Uh, yeah, I'm going to buy the heal there. <laughs> just a little bit of a threatened purchase being made. Decrease the cost of the awake, reroll, and decrease its cost again. <laughs> and finally, remove two shade splits. All right, Seraph, show us what you got. Oh, that sucks for us. That's real bad. We're just gonna have to eat a couple light wings worth of damage. Absolute worst position they could have started in. Good thing I took the HP there, eh? Actually, because that's... Yeah, I don't even need to heal anyone, so I can cast that on a different floor just to get the, that trigger off. I'm going to play a Pyagro as well down here. No more encant triggers for me. Yeah, the Priori's Cloak is actually bad. It's preventing me from getting a lot of triggers here because as soon as I heal my Sentient, I'm killing targets. Heal you, and then I will still use the razor sharp edge and the invigorating solution. Still, really don't want to encant him too much. I guess now that the frontliners have enough HP to live through it, it's not as bad. Generating five energy a turn. Start of the turn, you lose one for every stack of Ember Drain, decreases every turn. So I should have three Ember Drain at the start of the next turn, giving me two energy left over to play with. It should be fine. Let's cast that. One energy. I missed it. However, I'm still going to collect my extra damage from the razor sharp edges there. Oh! 
almost have a kill on me, do you? I see that. I see that. Hopefully I get some of my heals in the next hand because, oh, yikes. There we go. Okay, that's a lot of healing there. I hate that I'm still incanting the enemy while doing all this. But ultimately, I think I'm saving more damage than I'm... There we go. And we can see that born out in the fruits there. Hell yeah! And that's the Seraph down with two animus of will, both with the plus plus tens. Dual plus tens on them. With the champion, the sentient, who is three draw gems disguised in a trench coat. Love it. Could not have asked for a better run to really demonstrate the value of Cultivate there. Specifically, Animus of Will as well. When I actually got to play with the Cultivate for the first time in the private beta off camera, I I played for it. Uh, I played with it for just a little bit in that period of time. I did want to leave the majority of my impressions on camera, but I I had the difficulty of finding any Animus of Will to run it with. So I'm really glad to have had the opportunity here. For the moment, my name is Ben Rhapsody. Generate a shareable challenge for this Monster Train Hurzel's Workshop run. Printers Forums Governor. Too many plurals for me. For the moment, my name is Ben Rhapsody, the name of the game. As been Monster Train, hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully we will see you next time.